When Dominic Siriani dumped me, I understood my life was over. <laughs> we dated for four years, and they were the good ones, smack dab in my mid-twenties when everything on my body still hung roughly where it should. <laughs> we followed the successful dating timeline, sex on the third date, living together after a year, and buying a house in the third. We'd merged our pets, making us that home with four cats, which by all zoological standards constitutes a pride. We even hoped to have more eventually once Dominic finished grad school. We planned to adopt. So when he dumped me in year four for other Jamie, I was stunned. They married three months later. While other Jamie moved into the house I'd remodeled, I crashed at my friend Roller Derby Heather's cockroach-infested North Miami Beach condo. <laughs> it was called Jade Winds, a name more descriptive of Chinese food delivery aftermath than a proper dwelling. Austin seemed like a nice alternative. I'd heard the roads there were paved with breakfast tacos. <laughs> and the faucets dripped infused vodka. <laughs> so I quit my career, slapped a hitch on my Hyundai hatchback, and drove 24 hours with two screaming, defecating cats. <laughs> it was exactly what I needed. I hadn't arranged a job, but my romantic plans were set. No relationships, no strings. To assure I wouldn't get tied down, I would only make out with wildly inappropriate men. <laughs> Dudes who liked having fun, had neck tattoos, were trained to be professional bike polo players, <laughs> and who I'd never dare introduce to my parents. I heard Austin had a few of those. <laughs> Heather had me look up her old friend Guilty Dave when I got settled. By her accounts, he was odd, but kind. Guilty had once had an experience on acid that left him with a paralyzing distrust of squirrels. <laughs> he believes they're robot spies sent to do him harm. His name, Guilty Dave, came from his peculiar decision to wear the same t-shirt every day for a decade. A white and blue ringer that said guilty across the chest. Just walk up and tell him I sent you, Heather said. He's a good person to know. <laughs> I wound up at the club about a weekend and saw the shirt. I said, hey, you're Dave, and I'm supposed to know you. His face turned feral. <laughs> he started interrogating me. Who sent you, and how do you know my name? <laughs> then he got really quiet, turned his head towards the trees, and just squinted. I provided proper references. <laughs> he relaxed and asked how I'd been spending my time since I'd arrived. I told him I'd mostly been driving around, getting as lost as I could, and then finding my way back home. He asked if he could tag along. I looked hard at Guilty. His t-shirt was so thread-worn that I could see all of the tattoos on his shoulders and chest. There were angels, demons, and 20-sided dye. His teeth were questionable. He was sweating in the middle of winter. I thought, perfect. <laughs> I made pasta salad and grabbed a bottle of tequila for our trip. From the rivers to the hills to the foot trails, we parked and explored the city's outskirts. At each stop, we'd eat a little, drink a little, and tell stories. I think we'd figured we'd be bored of each other after about an hour or two, but this routine, eat, drink, talk, walk, it went on until it got dark out. We decided to feign responsibility and sober up at a nearby movie theater. Slumdog Millionaire had just come out, and it seemed long enough to counteract a day's worth of boozing. <laughs> While waiting for the next screening, we met Clay, the security guard, who seemed excited by our rowdiness. <laughs> a retired carpenter, he and his wife were traveling the country doing odd jobs like this parking lot patrol gig. In the next hour, Clay and I smoked some grass, and we all finished the tequila. He squired us around in his golf cart, screaming as he spun donuts at 12 miles an hour. <laughs> he dropped us off at the door. This had officially become my favorite date ever. 
I got a giant Slurpee and downed it in one glacial brain freeze inhale. <laughs> Certain the sugary non-booze liquid had fortified me, I decided it was time to do this thing. Now, it isn't until you're surrounded by sober people that you realize how bad off you really are. <laughs> Guilty Dave and I stunk of booze, cigarettes, weed, generally classified bad decisions. <laughs> we were glassy-eyed and trying to navigate those horrible little rows, clinging to chairs and using way too loud voices to relay information. Over here! No, there's a sweater! The only two seats left were smack dab in the middle of the theater. Getting to them became a quest. We held each other up, stumbled awkwardly, tripping over horrified looking people's shins. We even had to ford a river of bitchy queens who absolutely hated us. <laughs> who could blame them? We were so hateable. Once we sat down, I knew our date had taken a wrong turn. We didn't belong here. We were bad kids. Now, it's been a while, so I'll remind you how Slumdog Millionaire begins. First, there's pulsating Bollywood music, followed by multicolored strobe lights. I was unprepared for these things. I have a nervous stomach, a frequent vomiter. I've publicly puked more times than anyone you've ever known. Usually, I take a quick walk turn over a nearby balcony, or find some type of a receptacle, a place where nobody can see it. Here, I was trapped. As the strobe light took hold, I could smell everything. The queen's cologne, popcorn butter, the pheromones emitted from 100 first dates. I closed my eyes. When the warmth started activating my body, I knew we were all doomed. I grabbed the empty Slurpee cup, and I started filling it back up. <laughs> By the time I was done, the puke colored every last bit of the plastic dome lid. The queens were horrified. <laughs> their legs were up in their chairs like a cage of rats had been let loose in the theater. Their arms were crossed over their chests. Not sure of what to do, I held the cup up like I was toasting them and just shrugged. <laughs> then I grabbed Guilty's shoulder and said, we have to leave here right now. <laughs> I was mortified, thinking this was the beginning of my new Austin reputation. Guilty would tell his friends, I'd be vomit girl. Instead, he kissed me square on the mouth. I know. <laughs> he reassured me that this was a great day and I had drank an impressive amount. <laughs> he took me home, made me tea, fed me tacos, and left. Guilty and I have dated off and on for about five years, but it's more than that. We don't work as a traditional couple and probably never will but have developed such a love for one another that we've evolved into something better. We're each other's biggest cheerleader. I push him to do more with his life. He calms me down when I take on too much. And when my last boyfriend broke my heart, he hopped a bus to Dallas just to hug me. Sometimes we act like a couple. Sometimes we act like friends. But all we want is for the other to be happy at any personal cost. And that's the thing about strings. They're too simple and easily cut. It's when you allow them to fold back on themselves, to get complicated and knot up, that they resemble something new, and a weave is formed. A weave is, what's let you, is what lets you. <laughs> a weave is what lets a trampoline shoot you back up if you're falling at an accelerated rate. It makes the blanket that comforts you. It's the stuff of umbrellas. It's a seat belt. I went into this stage of my life believing that there were two ways that people could love each other, through easily defined relationships that follow a linear path, and as people you have fun with as you wait for the real thing. But when you apply those labels and controls, you miss out on the richness that accompanies complexity, the connections that exist across a spectrum of frequencies, and the benefits that come from realizing you don't need to analyze and understand it all. When I puked off the Mohawks balcony this last New Year's Eve, 
sure, I got some looks. <laughs> but that didn't stop Guilty from kissing me square on the mouth. I'm not sure what happened to Dominic Siriani. I heard he got a dog. LAUGHTER